this is Travis Wayne Goodsell, and this one's going to be a, another Mormon Code, Book of Mormon Code video. And I'll take you to Helaman, chapter 14. Yes, Mormons, that's where Samuel the Lamanite is. Okay, so Samuel, the name of God. Hmm, interesting. Name of God? The Lamanite. What? Weren't the Lamanites the apostate church? Hmm. He's from the apostate church and he's the name of God? Hmm. And so he's prophesying to the Nephites at the Nephite capital. Hmm. wonder what the Nephite capital is in comparison with today. Hmm. And so there's, he talks about the sign of the time of his coming. And there shall be a day, and when the night comes, there shall be no darkness, but light. And then another day, and then he will be born. And then we have... Uh, let's see, in five, let's see, is it five, yeah, five and six, and there shall a new star arise, hmm, such an one as ye had never beheld, and this shall be a sign unto you, and behold, this is not all, there shall be many signs and wonders in heaven. Now remember, the Book of Mormon is plagiarized, right? Critics, we all know this. We know the books. We can compare the two. And we can identify the plagiarism. It's that simple. It's not complicated. But here we have a, an interesting uh, thing that this isn't quite plagiarized. Uh, as far as we can tell so far, this involves astrology. Uh, not the astrology of, oh, you're a blue collar, and blue colors on this particular day with this particular conjunction in the heavens means that you're going to have a mood altercation between positive and negative feet. No. That's all crap. <laughs> no. Astrology, as the ancients understood it, and as was understood uh, in the early 1800s, as understood in the Bible, uh, had a different connotation. Uh, there were symbolisms, but uh, no mood stuff, so that it forces you as to what to do that you're predetermined to do this thing because the stars say so and you have no other choice. Alright, so, uh, did I tell you that there are maybe other signs and wonders in heaven? Okay. And so, uh, if you understand that this is about the latter days, the Book of Mormon, as a plagiarism, is intended as a warning for the latter days for those in America. And that is key. And I should, should give you the picture. Now, I'll give you the picture. I'll try to remember to put it in here. Cause, well, because they're not letting me do thumbnails on YouTube. I don't understand why. They verified me, but they're refusing to give me verified privileges. All right, so let's jump into the future. Into 3rd Nephi, I believe it was 23, yep. 23, verse 9. Jesus has arrived in America. It's true, the Book of Mormon is true. It's a history. It's another testament of Jesus. What, Jesus? Isn't that the name of the guy that follows Moses? who actually gets the house of Israel into the promised land 
that same Jesus? Yes. Because there is a royal reversal. In uh, Exodus, you have baby Moses growing up to battle Pharaoh to take back the throne. And in the end of the book of Deuteronomy, he disappears and is nowhere to be found. I think he actually is found, and they say he's buried in such and such a place. i got to get my right fingers here, because <laughs> too close to the camera. And, uh, and, and so uh, Mormons have it differently, and call them translated. Uh, but uh, uh, then the next book that follows Deuteronomy is the book of Jesus. And, uh, and that's a symbolism of the Jews. That's why Jesus of the Gospels, he's named Jesus because of this symbolic uh, prophecy of the Jews in the Torah and the book of Jesus. Joshua, Yahashua, and so uh, so yeah. Jesus is a, a a symbol of the last days Messiah, and uh, and so here we have Jesus in America. And the destruction of America has already taken place. And so now he's meeting with the people. He's performing all the miracles as the last days Messiah is supposed to do. Healing people and, uh, and blessing them. And then he says to Nephi, Nephi? That's the name of the first character. Well, yeah. The first character, because he talks about himself first, and then he goes into his father's abridgment, because Martin Harris burned the first 116 pages, which talked about too much Freemasonry for him to tolerate. <laughs> so he refused to publish the book and sell his farm to do so. And, and so they had to rewrite it so that he would feel more confident, dry and secure, to do that. And so... I. Uh, he says, Nephi, which again, Nephi, in the beginning of the book, is also a symbol of the last day's Jewish Messiah. And so Jesus, who is a symbol of the last day's Jewish Messiah, is talking to Nephi, who is a symbol of the last day's Jewish Messiah, with Samuel, the name of God, who's of the apostate church. <laughs> He's saying, where's his records? Nephi, I'm looking at these records. You've got a lot of records. Where's his records? And so that's why <laughs> uh, Helaman has those chapters dedicated to the record of Samuel the Lamanite is because Nephi obeys himself in symbolic form and uh, writes the record. And so he says, he said that there were going to be people arising from the dead. That's what the Jews understand, is that when the Jewish Messiah comes, there will be resurrection. Now, there are Jews who don't believe in resurrection, uh, but uh, that's what is talked about in the prophets. All right. Uh, da -da -da. And were not all of the prophecies of the name of God fulfilled of this apostate church? You see, this... I've been telling you about the Messiah, that he doesn't need to come if the church is good, if the United States is good, no need for him. The only reason why he would need to come is if the church is bad and the United States is bad and the destruction. 
that occurs on the face of the land. And then the rising up of the New Jerusalem with the Messiah. See what's going on here? And so uh, this isn't just, this isn't real story of the indigenous people. Jesus did not come. This is a plagiarized book. This is a specifically written book with a message, an encoded message. And I'm helping you to decipher this code. And, uh, and so, yeah, you have symbolism of last day's Jewish Messiah appearing after the destruction on America. And uh, this is also before, or uh, yeah, this is after uh, King Jacob, the usurper, takes over the United, I mean, America, <laughs> and turns it into a monarchy and destroys the whole, you know, I mean, America, giving away all the secrets. <laughs> and so. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's hilarious as something that is awesome to discover. But then you realize, hey, wait a minute. It's happening and is about to happen, and that's not cool. <laughs> Will I survive? And, and so then that gets scary because uh, only a few people will survive. But notice that uh, the bountiful that uh, Lehi's family with Nephi at this time, because he's finally born, which Mormons all messed that up. He is not born until Lehi leaves Jerusalem and goes to the top of the Red Sea. <laughs> Every Mormon misses that. Even the Book of Mormon video series misses that. So pay attention. <laughs> There's a reason why it's written that way. And, and so uh, they then head off into the wilderness and uh, make it to the land of Bountiful, which is on the other end of Saudi Arabia. Which, you know, yes, monsoons cause the bountiful nature of the vegetation there. But that's not the point of the book. It's not a history. It's a symbol. And so... Uh, you got to pay attention because the name of the place that they call on the eastern side of Saudi Arabia is called Bountiful. This is the place they left after the destruction of Jerusalem. The place where these Nephites, when Jesus is about to appear, go to after the destruction of the lands of the Nephites is to a place also named Bountiful. Not a coincidence. And no, it does not mean that we're all supposed to go into the hillside of Bountiful, Utah. That's probably going to be one of the first places destroyed. One can hope. And it has nothing to do with my animosity towards Elder I our President Irene. <laughs> As my family and myself have history with them, him. Okay, and so, uh, yes, that's the symbolism you want to look for in the Book of Mormon. Is that pattern. Lehi, and it, this is blurry. Is it blurry to you? Do I need to... I can't do the... Uh. Alright, so Lehi and his family leave as Jerusalem's destroyed. They make it to Bountiful. The Nephites leave after the destruction of their lands to a land called Bountiful. A promised land and even no I won't go that far we're at our end of time here and so 
uh, yeah, there's a, a significant reason why Samuel the Lamanite making records needs to be found among the history of the people. And uh, if you notice another pattern in the Book of Mormon, Nephi makes a record after Jerusalem's destroyed. Uh, Ether makes a record after Jerusalem's destroyed. Mormon, then his son Moroni, make records of their people being destroyed. So you see the pattern here? Samuel the Lamanite is following that same pattern as the others who are prominent in the story as well. And so uh, that's also significant, that we need to keep a record of the people uh, before Trump, I mean, <laughs> destroys America. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can dismiss the Book of Mormon as plagiarism, but then you got to ask yourself, well, why was it plagiarized? Why are there interesting patterns? Why are there certain coding? And once you figure that out, then you your eyes open and you go, oh my God, they're warning us. So, there you go. Founded all scriptures into one, which again is what the Jewish Messiah is supposed to do. In 14, Jesus had expounded all scriptures in one. 